Hey guys, it's Ryan here at OKS Creative. Today we're going to be going over a quick tutorial on keyframing, what keyframing is, and how you can use basic keyframes to enhance your edits. We'll be going through this on Adobe Premiere, since that's pretty much what we use here at OKS. But the same basic principles can be applied in any of the major editing programs. A keyframe is a location on a timeline which marks the beginning or end of a transition. It holds special information that defines where a transition should start or stop. You can apply keyframing to almost any movement or effect. In Premiere, you can find your keyframing options under the Effect Controls tab. The Effect Controls tab is where you manipulate the attributes of a clip, such as position, scale, and rotation. You can apply keyframing to any of these, or all of them if you want. To the left of each of these effects within this window, there's a stopwatch icon. That is what enables and disables the ability to create keyframes for that particular effect. If I want to create a zoom-in effect on this clip, I would click here at the stopwatch next to Scale. This will toggle keyframe on and off for this effect. You'll notice that as I do this, a little diamond shape pops up over here to the right, where the playhead's at. This little diamond is a keyframe. All of the information for this effect, so this 100%, now exists on this keyframe. If I move the keyframe to the start of the clip, so all the way to the left, I have set the clip to be scaled at 100% at the beginning. Now I can change the scaling here to however far I want to zoom in on this clip. Let's say 125%, and move this keyframe to the end of the clip. This clip is now keyframed to tell Premiere to scale from 100% up to 125% here at the second marker. We can now move these markers anywhere we want the zoom animation to start or end. Now that we have set these two keyframes telling Premiere what we want it to do with this clip, Premiere will fill in the rest of the information automatically. So when I hit play, you can see here that the value of the scaling effect is changing from 100% at the first keyframe to 125% at the second. Remember, now we can move these points wherever we want. By moving them closer together, the animation will happen faster. And if I move them farther apart, the animation takes longer to complete. We can even move the 125% keyframe to the beginning of our clip and move the 100% keyframe to the end. Now instead of creating a zoom in effect, we've created a zoom out. You can also copy and paste keyframes. So if we want this clip to zoom out, then zoom back in where it started, all we'd have to do is copy this 125% keyframe and then use Command or Control V to paste the second 125% keyframe where the playhead's at. Now this clip is keyframed to go from 125% to 100% back to 125%, as you can see here. Now this can be used on any effect, whether you want the clip to fade in or out with opacity or pan right or left with position. You can even use keyframing on any effect that you add to a clip. For example, if we add the cropping effect and want to create a wipe transition, all we'd have to do is follow the same steps. To make a wipe from left to right, I would just go over here to crop, find the little stopwatch next to it, and click it to make a new keyframe marker. This makes my first 0% keyframe. Now I'll move that to the front, and then change the value of this effect from 0 to 100%, which created a new keyframe underneath the playhead. Now I'll move this keyframe to where I want this transition to end. When I hit play, you can see the transition wipes from left to right until the image is completely gone. By moving the keyframes closer, it speeds up the action and makes it look a little bit better. Now if I put a clip underneath this one, you can get a better idea of how this effect could work. Alright guys, so that was keyframing. Again, there's an endless number of ways you can use it, and it's super easy to use as you can see. I hope this tutorial was helpful, and maybe this knowledge will help influence some of your decision making next time you're out there behind the camera. Understanding the amount of control that you have in the editing room can really take a lot of stress off trying to get that perfect pan or zoom. Until next time, this has been Ryan with Arcaeus Creative. Have a great day.